Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So more details have emerged about the criminal case against Matt Gates's friend, Joel Greenberg, and in regard to his ties to others in and around the Republican Party in Florida. And these details also really show how intertwined these two men are, Gates and Greenberg, and how they're also, in addition to what I shared with you yesterday, tied to that fake candidate down in Florida who took off and moved to Sweden. So newly reviewed documents and emails show that Greenberg handed out very suspicious contracts and taxpayer money, essentially, to several of his allies and Republican politicians before he was ousted from his job as tax collector. Some of these contracts and payments appear to be just complete and utter scams, just total giveaways. Auditors who were reviewing Greenberg's records from his time as the county tax collector say that they found a number of consulting contracts which were paid out, yet there's no evidence of work being provided. And those are taxpayer funds, remember. And they brought this guy in because he was supposed to get rid of the swamp, essentially. He was supposed to make things right after the last guy was corrupt. The auditors wrote, quote, we consider most of these contracts to be either excessive or unnecessary. And what's clear from these documents and this audit is that pro-Trump lobbyist Chris Dorworth wasn't just close to Matt Gates. He was also close with Greenberg. Here's why. Shortly after Greenberg took office, he signed a lobbying contract with Dorworth's firm. Now, what a tax collector's office needs with a lobbying firm, I'm not sure. But email records even show that when Greenberg would send correspondence to other government officials, he sometimes blind copied Dorworth in those emails, meaning that Dorworth could see all of the correspondence, he could see all of the emails, but the other people included in those emails didn't realize that Dorworth was included as a recipient. They had no idea that he was reviewing and able to read their correspondence with Greenberg. Greenberg also appears to have helped Dorworth in regard to a large housing development that he had been trying to build for several years, it's called River Cross. So some of the taxpayer money that Greenberg doled out went to a man named Matt Morgan. Morgan is a former wrestler, as I understand it, and he was planning to run for a county commission seat, and he was a proponent of this large housing development, River Cross. He was running against someone who opposed River Cross development. So for some unknown reason, Greenberg's office started paying this Morgan guy, this former wrestler, $4,500 a month, approximately eight months prior to when he launched his campaign. Now, a spokesperson for the tax collector's office told reporters that they can't find any contract with this Morgan guy or the LLC that he had set up. And auditors say that they've found no evidence of work product. That's a direct quote. What it appears to have been was Greenberg was helping him to pay off an almost $40,000 unpaid income tax lien. Morgan had been carrying $37,000 roughly of unpaid income taxes. And shortly after he started his campaign, this was paid off. And guess who immediately threw his support behind Morgan's campaign? Yep, you guessed it, Matt Gates. Gates tweeted out, quote, Matt Morgan is a rising star in the Republican Party. He's exactly what we need in Florida to energize the MAGA movement. Matt Morgan has my total endorsement. So this guy is a rising star. He's taking money from the tax collector. He's taking taxpayer money from the tax collector 
to pay off a lien and pro I'm assuming, don't know, we'll find out hopefully down the road, but you know, assuming he's taking it so that he will get this large housing development underway and approve it. So this is MAGA? This is what it stands for? I, I thought that Gates and Trump and all of these guys said to drain the swamp. Hmm, yeah. So Dorworth must have appreciated Greenberg's help in providing funding to Morgan because according to these documents and emails, which were reviewed by the Orlando Sentinel, Dorworth invited Greenberg to several private and VIP events, including one of Donald Trump's rallies. And he lured Greenberg to this rally by saying, quote, they will feed us all booze and give us a ride as well as an escort to our luxury boxes. Now, Dorworth, if you're sitting there going, who is this Dorworth guy? He is alleged to have had a conversation with Matt Gates about running a shill candidate in Florida's 9th district and a mysterious fake candidate named Justine Iannotti did end up on that ballot in that district that they discussed. And then she suddenly picked up, left everything behind. She had almost $200,000 in student debt, left that behind, left her family behind and moved to Sweden last month. Because, you know, that's what people do. They run for office and then they just go, oh, it didn't work out. I'm going to go to Sweden. I'm just going to go live in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, that's totally normal. But Dorworth isn't the only mutual friend that Gates and Greenberg have. Remember the hand surgeon? Again, if you've been following the show, you know, there's a hand surgeon who also happens to be a marijuana business owner who allegedly footed the bill for Gates's travel and accommodations and female escorts to the Bahamas. His name is Dr. Jason Pirazzolo. Well, a former model named Megan Zalanka also received $7,000 of taxpayer funds courtesy of Joel Greenberg. And she was working for Dr. Perizzola at the time that Greenberg paid her. She was working in his marijuana business. And according to a contract that was signed by Greenberg and Zalanka in January of 2018, she was to help with social media marketing and communications. But none of the other employees at the tax collector's office knew what she was actually doing. I mean, that's not suspicious at all, right? A former model working in a marijuana business, doing marketing and communications work for a tax collector's office. <laughs> oh yeah, sounds totally legit. I'm, I'm sure she's a real marketing genius. I mean, so reporters have reached out to her unsuccessfully. They went to her address of record and a man answered the door and he said that she didn't live there. Then he showed the reporters a grand jury subpoena that she apparently received and it was requesting her testimony last August. So, rut row shaggy, <laughs> not looking good for her. And then there's this community relations consulting contract that came up. This contract Greenberg gave to a political strategist named Eric Fogelsong. Sounds a little more, bit more legit, right? He's at least a political strategist. Greenberg used a government-issued credit card, and he paid Fogelsong $10,000 in late 2017 for this community relations consulting. Fogelsong claims that he was hired as a consultant to determine if Greenberg could work with another tax collector to open more offices along the county border. Isn't that just like a phone call? I mean, <laughs> don't you just pick up the phone and say, hey, want to open more offices? Are you agreeable to open, opening more offices? <laughs> That costs $10,000? What the hell 
was he communicating with these people that cost $10,000? Totally shady. But this Vogel song guy, as you're going to hear, is a real piece of work. So he fits right in with this shady crew and these alleged illegal dealings. Fogel Song was arrested in 2019 and he was charged with grand theft after he was accused of stealing $20,000 from a political action committee. He pleaded guilty to that crime and he's currently serving three years probation. And guess what? Fogel Song is also connected to the fake candidate who ran in Florida's ninth district, Justine Iannotti. What a coincidence, right? The same Florida district, the same fake candidate that Matt Gates allegedly had a conversation about. Now, according to Iannotti's campaign finance filings, Fogelsong was the largest contributor to her sham campaign. And he may be one of the few or possibly the only real donor, because as I mentioned yesterday, the other people who were listed as donors for her, when they were approached by reporters, they said they never gave her a penny. Some didn't even know who she was. So when reporters asked Fogelsong about his supposed donation to Iannotti's campaign, he said, quote, I think I gave money to a couple of independent candidates in races last year because I'm fed up with both parties. He was then asked if he knew her and he said, not at the time. The reporter then asked if he knows her now and he replied, no, not really. I don't want to be involved in stories about it. Yeah, I, I bet you don't. I bet you don't since you're out on probation already for committing a crime <laughs> and this is a fake candidate but really you you just donate money to people and you don't know anything about them you just send money to a complete stranger you've never seen you've never heard you don't know anything about their policies anything about their profile their their background and you just send them money really here's my best dr evil impression Right. <laughs> so there were others that Greenberg paid with taxpayer money. Taxpayers gave $60,000 to a company set up by a man named Mike Ertel. Ertel is the former county supervisor of elections in Florida. He was also Governor Ron DeSantis's secretary of state until he resigned because photos showed up with Ertl dressed in blackface. And like others, Ertl's contract showed that he was being paid for consulting services. Yet, tax collector employees, you guessed it, said, nope, he never, he, they literally said, quote, he never did anything for us. And this was also confirmed by the auditors. They could find nothing, no work that he had done. Likewise, Greenberg handed State Representative Anthony Sabatini $7,500 of taxpayer money over a two and a half month period in 2019. Auditors can't figure out why he did that. So just as with Gates, Greenberg could end up taking a lot of people down with him and it's awesome. What the hell is in the water down there? <laughs> hey, Florida, do better be best. <laughs> it's really looking like there's a lot of ties to this fake candidate down in Florida and Greenberg and Gates and then this other guy, Dorworth. There's too many coincidences. And again, it's not illegal to run as a fake candidate, but you can't pay people to run as a fake candidate. And you also can't exceed campaign finance so if there was money given to her to run and they can trace it back to any of these people, they're screwed. They're done. Couldn't happen to a nicer group of guys. All right. I'll keep you guys posted. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.